Hi again, teachers. I wanted to um, make another video for getting you started on the Zoom app. Um, so I've already gone over how to record videos on Google Meet, um, but Zoom is an app that many schools and teachers, professionals are using right now, especially due to school closures. Um, I wanted to give you a few simple tips to get you started, and I will post more videos later about specific tools and how you can use them. So I am going to present my screen now to show you the Zoom app. Okay. Um, there is a download center on the Zoom website. If you don't already have this app, I suggest that you go to zoom.us slash download. There are different downloads for uh, different options and plugins, extensions. Um, some of you might be using Zoom on your phones this week or on your iPads. Um, you might want to download in the App Store or download in the Google Play Store. Um, and then if you scroll down controllers for Zoom rooms, um, you can download in Microsoft, the App Store or Google Play. And those are just mostly for your devices um, like a laptop. I already have Zoom on my laptop, so I'm going to search it in the bar here and click Zoom, and this is my app here. So I'm going to open up Zoom now. And wait for it to load. Okay, when I open up my Zoom app, I'm already logged in on a Google account, um, and I see these four options here. I can start a new meeting, I can join a meeting, um, there's a schedule option, which I'll go over in another video, and there is a share screen option, just like the present now in Google Meet. I'm going to start a new meeting. And when I start that new meeting, um, Zoom doesn't like that I am using uh, my webcam for Google Meet, but I wanted to show you using Zoom <clears throat> how, um, how to open that up. So I am going to see, like now my webcam is being used by Google Meet, so I'm going to turn off my webcam for Google Meet, or at the very least, try to. Okay, so now I've turned off that camera and I should be able to go into Zoom. You won't need to do this step, of course, um, but I'm going to go into Zoom now and hopefully my camera will work, okay? So I'm going to join with computer audio and it wants to test my speaker and microphone. So I'm going to join with computer audio now, um, and it looks like it's testing. It looks like, based on how the green is moving in that microphone there, um, that my microphone is working. So I'm going to click Start Video. Maybe my camera will work now. Okay, um, so now, because I've turned off my camera for Google Meet, which is what I'm using to record this video, um, it is now working in Zoom. So I'm going to maximize my screen here for Zoom, and I am going to show you some of the buttons at the bottoms. Now, I don't have to necessarily use my camera, okay? I can always switch that off the same way that I turned it on. Um, I can also go into video settings on my camera. And um, if you would like to, uh, you can change some of these video effects. I suggest doing that only um, if you need to show text. So for example, I have um, this notebook here, right? Um, and for you right now, it is backwards, and for me and for my viewing. So if I enable the mirror effect, I can make it so that the screen flips in case you need to show some somebody on the video something. So now you can see this notebook. It was a gift from a friend. Um, you can see this notebook, but if I don't um, check this box, you get the flip screen. If I do, the words are backwards, okay? Um, so that's something that I would think about if you are planning on giving uh, lessons on Zoom or planning on showing something to somebody instead of uh, sharing your screen. So I'm going to X out of there. Um, that's one option. And you can mute yourself when someone else is talking. This is helpful during a meeting situation um, on Zoom because sometimes people can, because they're not sitting next to each other, they can talk at the same time and interrupt each other by accident. So you can mute yourself. This is also helpful if you're working remotely um, because if you have children or pets at home or other disturbing noises, um, such as something outside or a car honking, you can mute yourself if there's a sound happening so that 
not everybody hears that sound. So that's helpful. Um, here, if you go into the microphone settings, you can see the different microphones on your computer. Some of you might be using headphones or a headset. Uh, many headphones do have a microphone built into it somewhere. Um, if you don't have a built-in microphone, you can try to access um, headphones that have one, a headset. But this one on top here is the microphone in my computer. And the one I'm using is one that's an external microphone. If I look down here to invite, I have some options here. I can copy the, inv the entire invitation and I can paste that in a separate email. I can also directly email people um, through these Gmail um, default email and Yahoo mail buttons. I prefer personally to copy the invitation just for the ease of access. Okay. Um, if I click manage participants, this is a place where as the host, I can see everybody. Um, when you're in a Zoom meeting, you'll see people popping up on your screen. Um, someone's screen will enlarge when they're talking, when other people are not talking. Um, but this is a place where I can, if I want to, mute my participants um, or I can rename my participants in the meeting. Um, that probably won't be necessary for what you're using it for, but it's something that uh, you can use to manage your meeting to mute people if they're interrupting others or um, if they don't know how to mute themselves. It's helpful if you know how to do it as the host. So I'm going to um, click away from that. And the other option here is the chat, which many people use in Zoom. Um, you can share files on this chat. This might be helpful for some of you. Um, if you click more, um, you can chat with people um, in the Zoom meeting or out of the Zoom meeting, but you don't really need to know that for what you might be using it for. Okay, so I can click away from chat by clicking that button again. Um, there's also reactions, which is another uh, fun tool, but we won't go over it in this video. If I click share screen with you, I have some options here. I have just my regular screen. I have the option for a whiteboard. Um, I can share with an iPhone or iPad. This is helpful if you have an, a particular app that you would like to show your team that you are uh, meeting with or your student or family you're meeting with. Um, or I can share some other options. I have some different windows open, which is why it is giving me all these options. Um, for this purpose, I'm just going to share my screen and I'm going to share now. So uh, right now I have it open to the, um, the Google Meet app. So I am going to open a new tab that I'm sharing my screen in. I know I'm using two apps at once. It's a little bit confusing, um, but I'm going to try my best. And I'm going to uh, start a new presentation. Okay, so this would work well if you were uh, presenting to your teammates. Um, you could, I'm going to just for the purposes of this, type presentation. Um, and I'm going to click present. So it might be, uh, it might be really tempting for you to just click through your slides, but this appears smaller for your teammates as well. So you should try to go into present mode if you are choosing to present something. Okay. And now you might be thinking my toolbars are gone right now for Zoom. I don't know what's going on. Um, and I just want to tell you that you can hover over here at the top and you'll have your toolbar back for Zoom. The nice thing about a presentation as you're sharing your screen um, is that you can still stop your video. So I could choose to click stop video if I just want to narrate, right? So now my video is gone, but I'm going to start my video again um, and I can still mute myself if someone else is speaking. I can still pause my sharing. Um, and there's one more feature up here that might be helpful for teachers, which is the annotation feature. Um, this is something where you can um, have the rest of the people that you are in a Zoom meeting with see you do different things such as the spotlight, right? So I could select spotlight and I would have kind of a laser pointer, right? To direct uh, people to look at something. Um, there's also this option, which is a little tiny arrow. So if I was going through maybe a bulleted list, that might be helpful. Um, there are different stamps 
that I can stamp around the presentation if I'd like to highlight something. There is the draw tool, which is exactly what it sounds like, right? I can draw boxes around things. This is really helpful for if you are meeting with a family or student, um, if you'd like to highlight something for them. So there are those options. There's the option to write text, right? And to click away from it. And I can type text directly onto my presentation as I am showing my screen. There is also the option if you go to format to change your colors, your width, your font. Um, so there's a lot to play with here. The eraser, of course, can get rid of things for you if you don't want them on your screen, or you can just click clear and clear all drawings, okay? Um, I can also make it so that my viewers can see my mouse wherever I am going um, and directing them to. So that it, I would think is the most useful um, because certainly when you are presenting, you're able to gesture and you're able to highlight things um, as you are writing on a board maybe. So this is a nice tool for teachers um, if you plan on teaching lessons to students online, if you want to present something to your students and highlight or underline things, or if you're meeting as a team. Um, besides that, if I click stop share, then I'm back to my video again. Um, and one last thing I'm going to show you in this first video is that you can end your meeting um, as the host, okay? Um, if I click end meeting, I can either leave the meeting or I can end meeting for all. Um, if I just leave the meeting, that means that the rest of the participants that were invited to that meeting will still be able to talk and meet. Um, but if I end meeting for all, um, then I would end the meeting for everybody. It's pretty self-explanatory. Um, but for this video, I'm going to end meeting for all so you can see the next steps. Okay, so when I end that meeting, um, I am back to my home app screen. The major takeaways for this video, I am going to toggle my screen a little bit so I can get back to Google Meet and turn my camera back on. The main takeaways for this video um, are to download the Zoom app if you don't have it already. You can download it on your desktop, you can download it on an iPad or a tablet or your phone. So it's really versatile in that way. Um, the other note to take away is that you need to invite participants by copying the invite link. Um, and when you are hosting a Zoom meeting, um, it allows you to copy that link for your participants to click on and join. Okay, so it's really secure in that way. And the third takeaway from this video is if you are in, um, if you are presenting something in Zoom, then you can use the tools um, as you're presenting that are in that toolbar if you hover above. Um, so I hope that you enjoy uh, using Zoom. It's a wonderful tool. Um, there are many wonderful tools out there for meeting with teams. Um, do not forget also, fourth point before I go, um, the chat box feature in Zoom allows you to share files so that everyone can view a file on their own computer or device or you can share your screen and show everyone the file, okay? I will see you in the next video where I go into more detail about Zoom. That's all I've got for right now. Bye, teachers.